Okay, there. It's not. Welcome to the joy of living. Being realized through uh, manual conception of sanity. Meaning that I kind of had to conceive my own sanity in a very literal sense to find joy. Because, well, you know, I've talked about this a hell of a lot. The last two years about, I've been a turbulent road. <laughs> it's been stressful. I'm currently in Montreal. And this process of mine, because I, I live in... Um, a much smaller town. This process of mine. Of finding myself. And of finding happiness. And so on. Has just been amplified. While I've been here. As well. Maybe a different environment. Brings about different ideals. You know how. A lot of artists like to be inspired by being elsewhere in the literal sense. But let's not be where I usually am. Let's be somewhere else. So. I have found my inspiration. Yet to pretend that my view on life is not still diluted. Would be a lie. But to also pretend that in some ways it isn't the most potent and vivid it has ever been. Would be a lie as well. As I feel this grand, breathtaking understanding. Like the, 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 this comprehension. Upon life and how it suits you and what it stands for and what it means and so on. The realities of the reality, preferably actually, of our future. Is not something we think about very frequently. Unless you have an express purpose to do so. Yet we are always in our future in a way. As our current actions create our future. I am in the present moment in my room. Which means that in the future I am bound to go upstairs. This has created a pathway. Therefore, our futures are incredibly well, they've always the course of time has always been incredibly important. That's a given because while it is what lets us be, it is what lets us live. But maybe it is best to not think about it when you turn the coin and consider that perspective. Because while I think about my future a lot, but You know, I think about how the implications of my present will, will lead me to a different life. But what's the point in contemplating that? 
What's the point in the contemplation of, you know, being more comfortable and finding more success and so on, when in many ways that can actually inhibit creativity instead of letting it flourish or inhibit the mind instead of letting it wander. Or set expectations for things can be to our detriment. Now, there are times where thinking about the future is considerably needed. But if you ask me, in many ways, it's a very arguable thesis to say that it's best to just forget it and to live in the moment. There is this interesting idea with creativity where An artist that has found success is more likely to dilute his craft for the purpose of having the number of recipients multiply or just out of a fear of conforming or, you know, a fear that Conformity is the needed elements. In order to retain li listeners. I'm talking about musicians because, well, I've. I've been one myself, but it's more so that their musician stories are the ones I've read upon. Or just, you know, I've seen the, de the degrade in some artists. A pivotal artist in terms of, you know, just my life and who has inspired me so much is Weezer. I don't really love them anymore, but Pinkerton, their second album, back in the day. Initially, I, I remember I, I first heard Across the Sea, and it's perhaps actually on the, I was immediately blown away, but it's maybe on the third listen or fourth listen, that I actually became in disbelief. I became in pure disbelief that music like that could even exist because of the raw viscerity and I think viscerity is a word meaning the sheer elements of I guess The realness. <laughs> I don't have a better word for it other than the scariness of the realness, I guess. How it... Kind of... It spoke of extremely personal... Things that album even though you look at it on the cover and I just like based on what it presents in a very literal sense and it is a rock star lamenting not getting not finding true love in his relationships with women in his sexual escapades 
No, what's fascinating to me about that is that if you look at it from his perspective, from the perspective of the lead singer, who is the writer of the songs, it is undeniably real as fuck. And how... The alienation of success is brought about when you cannot enter a room without everyone wanting your number. You cannot take a walk down the street Without paparazzi crowding you. Eventually it takes a toll on a person's mind. And yeah, some. Narcissistic figures would maybe enjoy it for a while. But eventually even they would get fucking tired. And when you think about this, how the subject matters that he cannot find true love. Subject matters that he cannot find true love. But more than that. It's often that he's afraid of approaching women and that he fantasizes about them instead. Well, it's kind of humbling. But most of all, it's it's demonstrative of, 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 of the fact that every beautiful thing in life has a curse right next to it. Every intricate and deep moment and ideas built out out of a struggle. So, you know. Pinkerton ravaged me. It made me into a solemn soul. And that it just opened my eyes, yet it It made me sad in the best way. And then I fell out of love with it. Because I listened to it like... 400 times. And then I just fell out of love with it. And what's interesting is that now music comes off to me as like... Scientific. (laughs) You know like how... When you are deciding how to create a formula through a scientific experiment, it requires a lot of experimentation, but eventually it comes to a perfect result, or as good of a result as you can, an improvement. Well, I see... Music as putting notes together very logically, logically piecing together notes, and it creating a result. And yes, it can move me, and it can be sad and emotional, and you can tell that the artist sometimes is distraught, just like you can tell it's incredibly happy, just like, you know, the emotional effect is still there. But songwriting is a science in that you could have that exact same emotion and it could sound like shit. It is because they followed the puzzle, is is because they followed the procedure of songwriting through the theoretical lens, through the degree of theory, that it sounds good, you know, that it sounds pleasing to the ears. Like if 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 Pinkerton was the exact same subject matter, the exact same lyrics the exact same emotions, but it was all dissonance. It was all not pleasing to the ears. Then what would be the fucking point? 
Because the point is that, yes, you can have something incredibly emotive, but that's not, people can appreciate and love that about the work, but that's not what people are going to grab onto. At least from my personal experience. But still, it's it's incredibly moving and daring and charming. Most of all, it's it's just a needed. It's a needed truth. <laughs> that in art is personal expression, not just objective expression. So if you have the capability of writing a brilliant song, then please do make it sorrowful as well. As it is wholly, not only within your right, but in the correct application, uh, a treat, a beautiful, amazing thing. I haven't figured out music, which trips me out in the sense that, you know, how I create, I mean, my creation of music. You can tell when you listen to my songs that I have not figured out how to make music, even though sometimes people say, oh, they're great. I reconnected with an old friend and I sent some my latest song on SoundCloud, which is called Calamity. Calamity meeting a de- meaning a destructive end. That's the meaning of the word. And he listened and he said it's very good. And in my mind, I like it. Outside in my, like, because, you know, to me, the mind and the body are kind of different things. But I won't separate them like that and just sketch people out. But I like it. I like the song. But, uh, it's not the same as anything I listen to. In fact, it's a bit too different and not really in a great way, in a pretty good way. I just want to release this song that, like, makes my eyes go wide. As I think to myself, I've just fucking done it. And then, like, I tap on the table. My computer stays on. As I then go on Discord and I message a friend and I say, my first great song. (laughs) And then it actually turns out the next day to be true. I look forward to that moment because that means I'll be one step closer to actually having consistency be a key element of my songwriting and having exciting and daring ideas come to fruition in a much more prolific way or just, you know, accurate, concise way. Because, I mean, the song is, like, good. But then I listen to the Divine Chord by the Avalanches. And not only does it sound artistic and kind of melancholic through its sounds, but it sounds happy, it sounds life-affirming, it sounds direct, it sounds like the the singer is singing to you in a very poetic way. And, uh, you know, probably the most beautiful part of what makes us ourselves 
Is that or artistry it stems from the soul, it stems from the heart. Or preferably that when it does is when beautiful things happen. I'm just thinking to myself now, like, that kind of contradicts my previous statement where I said it's a scientific affair, but it doesn't really, because that's theory. That's musical theory, even though, you know, I've barely fucking touched on theory. I haven't really fucked with theory at all. But, uh... In the moments where you are to write your idea into a, into a result and it, and there be no distractions and there be no halts, it simply translates, then you are communicating from the heart, but not only that, but you have figured out the formula. You know, that's my whole point. Me, it's like, I don't mind that it's that way in a way. I kind of do in another, but there's a lot of course correction. Even though sometimes I could swear, man, I'm just walking down the street. And, you know, I'm like, it, I'm listening to like only in dreams, except in my head. <laughs> Which makes me sound like a total weirdo. And then I just add in like guitar. Sounds like the most beautiful thing of all time. And then I'm like, if only there was a way to record your thoughts. For real though. My friend Ahmed has the same thing going on with himself. He hasn't talked to me about it lately, but how he creates songs in his head and yet he cannot songwrite. <laughs> so I think it's sad. But relatable. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I'm in Montreal. 22 minutes into the damn video. I'm in fucking Montreal. Which is a huge thing. Because I was in Moncton, man. And then I took a plane flight. And I ended up here. Then I went to see a concert for the first time in my entire life. Pearl Jam. And honestly, that lead singer, bro, is a fantastic performer. He was like the happiest guy ever on stage. He drank damn champagne. And, uh, I love his moves. The experience was breathtaking. Yet I got bored halfway through because I was so depressed in that moment. Depression just hit me like a fucking wave from the sea, you know. But, uh, I loved it. I loved it for what it was. I loved it for what it was. And he played this one song, this, like, really eerie synth and, like, really dark, gritty bass line. And I was just like, damn, this is actually a miracle. And then they played a few songs from 10, their first album. And I was like, damn, this is kind of a miracle, kind of just really good. Then they played some other songs, which which went from kind of a brilliant result to um, pretty decent, pretty good. Then after an hour and a half, it closed up. And then tomorrow... I'm going to go see Ahmad. Who is Ahmad? Well, I just mentioned him. But a very good friend. An amazing friend. From the online. The web. The net. We speak like once a week, once every two weeks up in Discord. You know, Discord, the chatting out. And, uh... I'm going to be visiting him tomorrow, so I'm excited. Now, 
I just want to give a hug to my mom as a kind of, because I feel like this is a great video. So I want to finish up with what gives me hope and happiness and love in life, which is my mom. So I'm just going to go find her. Um, mother, mother, here I come. And uh, yeah, we're going to be maybe playing some retro games, like GameCube games. But should be some something pretty amazing. Um, wait, I'm just gonna dodge her boyfriend's out. But wait, you live in here half the time. I could swear on that. Hey, mom, mom. And now I'm fucking depressed because she ain't here. It's clear, mom. All right, well, barnacles, barnacles indeed. Oh my God. My, your voice, where, 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 where you at? Okay, mom, je suis perdu. Oh, je peux pas donner le hug? Je peux pas... Okay, so I love you too. All right, um, she ain't down because she's sleeping. My mom is, uh, you know, on my older channel, episode, I want to say seven. Um, we recorded a video together and it was probably the most sweet thing there was. Go right downstairs. Probably the most sweet, kind thing on her arms, especially. <laughs> um, then we hug at the arms. And you know, discussion followed with a hug. I think might some. Or it might sum us up extremely well or maybe beyond that <laughs> because well affection is a kindness that not everyone gives you know and she gives it to me uh, some moms do with their kids but maybe there's a beauty in that regardless Maybe it especially defines the beauty. To know that people out here, people out there, I mean, have relationships with their mom that are as amazing as mine is with my own. That are as charming. Because she's a very charming lady. And I feel sad because she's sleeping, so I couldn't give her a hug, but. I'm a real mama's boy. I'll always be one, you know. <laughs> I'll be 40 and I'll be like, you look younger than I do, mom. Actually, the truth. I guarantee fucking to you when I'm 40, I'll be telling her that. Even though she'll be quite old at that point. Even though she'll be in her 60s. So. Anyways, this was Matt. And, uh, I love you. Thank you for being a human being. Thank you for being a real hero. I'm just referencing the song. And, uh, yeah, take care. Love. Goodbye.